Well, here's those knives that I was uh, hoping to get in here. And hooray, I did. I suppose for unboxing today, why not? I use the, uh, the Artisan Cutley uh, Orion. Super large knife. It's uh, really, really light. I really like it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and close that guy up. Alright, we got a little Blade HQ um, zippy locky thingy thingy. Not zip lock. Hook and loop. But, uh, Alright. So, I will go ahead and do what's in the, uh, black box here this is a kaiser and we can see by the uh the gate fold here that uh this isn't a vanguard it's a what do we call it the bladesmith the uh more expensive ones here and a little pouch hey, hey extra hardware i always love to see that okay This is the Matanzas. As we can, yeah, we go. It's Nick Swan design. This is a uh, titanium frame look. Yeah, fairly interesting kind of look to the uh, lock bar cut out there. It does have um, pocket clip standoffs, which is something I'm not a huge fan of, but whatever. We have a uh, man a very very seamless micarta uh, inlay going on here. Like the only way I can tell that it's an inlay and not the same piece is using a fingernail on it. So that's pretty nice and impressive here. Blades actually a little higher up than uh, I would kind of think for um, for Kaiser, but it's only kind of there at the end. That might also have to do with the fact that this has uh, some kind of thick blade stock going on with it. But, yeah, like I said, it's a Nick Swan design. This is an S35VN. Balance point seems to be right behind the uh, little finger area, so that's a little bit different. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of... Uh, Knives from Nick Swan. I definitely have the um, the uh, the slip joint from Concept. That's it. Jeez, <laughs> words are failing me right now. It seems. Uh, I think there's one more that I'm probably missing there. But uh, yeah, I can definitely see this was a, a concession so that they would uh, be able to just make a a stamped clip still possible because of the uh the coloration and everything like that that it is a titanium clip but mm, i don't know steel lock bar uh insert that's good to see a different pivot than uh what i've generally seen i do like the subdu subdued uh flipper tab on this thing uh, what I do think this thing reminds me of is, uh, these guys, um, the, uh, the Grazioso. This is a Manganus design, uh, completely different designer, all that sort of stuff, but they do kind of, at least to me, look a little bit similar. But, uh, of course, that's frame lock, and these are, uh, liner locks, including, so far, the fancy ones. But, uh, yeah, uh, this was kind of one of those daily deals, uh, things on, uh, Blade HQ. And, uh, man, I really couldn't pass it up. It's a titanium frame lock, S35 VN. All that sort of good stuff for, uh, I, it was well under a hundred bucks. It was, uh, hard to say no to that. 
This does have a uh, titanium nitride uh, PVD coating on it. Right. Yeah, interesting. Doesn't have uh, so much in the way of a uh, lock bar access, at least not uh, on this particular um, access there. Uh, but I suppose it does have uh, some generous scallops going on. I'm, I'm going to call it the hips <laughs> right here, right behind the uh, little finger area there. Makes it decently easy to uh, open and close that guy. This is definitely an, uh, an older Kaiser, so the action isn't going to be um, just ridiculously amazing out of the box like uh, some of their uh, their newer designs are. And this thing also has a coated blade, which hinders uh, most knives just a little tiny bit, but still works out quite all right. I uh, kind of wish that they actually uh, gave you some sort of a sharpening choil or something like that. The, uh, the plunge grind is done right, but, uh, man, there's just absolutely no room for error <laughs> whatsoever. But still, quite neat. All right, so that is the Kaiser. How about the Kershaw? And I am still so used to Kershaw boxes being almost fully silver. And then they have a really gaudy uh, American flag sticking out of them. Do they still do the flag on these? Well, they do that instead. Okay, well, that kind of spoiled it a little bit. This is an auto. This is the Launch 6. And this one ain't playing around. This one's got uh, the teal aluminum to it. They also do this in uh, a standard black. Man, that thing's got a kick to it uh <laughs> yeah this one ain't playing around at all um got a nice pocket clip gun going on here uh the launch series uh basically all of them are made in the states uh seems like they uh they go really out of their way to uh prove that on a lot of those <laughs> uh this is using cpm 154 uh which if you're not familiar is the uh Powder Metallurgy version of um, 154CM steel. Uh, there's also a couple other companies that will do something very, very similar to it. Like Damasteel's uh, RWL 34. Also uh, metallurgically the same. But uh, yeah, there's a ton of uh, Kershaw launch series uh knives that are uh cali legal or uh legal for california because they're uh they're under two inches and uh well, it just doesn't work for my hands and uh this guy came along it just looked nice and crazy and uh yeah i, I really do like this thing quite a bit We got a nice uh, stone wash finish going on on the blade. It's not coated, so it's not going to be called black wash. Hoping maybe that will uh, work itself out just a little bit over time, but I do feel the possibility of just a little tiny bit of um, up and down blade play. But in general, that does kind of happen sometimes with uh, button locks. Pocket clip is uh, very much not uh, deep carry. You're, you're going to have uh, quite that triangle of teal coming out of your pocket there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of like the, uh, the teal look to it. It's, uh, it's just different than the, uh, the boring uh, black knives that uh, pretty much everybody does and or these days um, almost everyone's doing kind of a, a green or olive drab sort of thing going on if micarta is involved because that's kind of the uh, the default coloration there let's take a look at that blade yeah plunge grind starts back there it is a little bit gradual 
but with the way that uh, this thing is ground, I don't think that's really going to be all that much of a problem here. Um, interesting. Okay. Usually I will see um, a designer mark on here, and uh, they even have a designer mark for Kershaw in-house. Kind of looks like a weird Star Wars faction symbol or something like that. But uh, that's not even on here. It's just not accredited to pretty much anyone here. is a little interesting maybe uh the the design for this uh predated that i'm not quite sure uh what i can say is uh yeah some people uh don't like billboarding of uh, certain things uh actually i can pull this guy up because i had just taken a look at him in the last video here a little uh pivot ring here uh that uh, apparently some people are vehemently against uh, with these two sons. It doesn't particularly bother me uh, all that much. It just kind of reminds me of, I don't know, tires <laughs> where it has texts that are uh, going around in, the, in a circle and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, specifically the uh, the pivot colors on, on some two sons, uh, people really don't like. Um but, uh, you know, in that same way, because I think the only reason they don't like it, they, I think it's saying Tucson probably doesn't bother people all that much. It's the fact that it says the word China on it um, is, uh, you know, for some people, I, I can kind of understand their, I don't know, America. I like to support that stuff. But, hey, you bought the knife. So there's that. But in that same way, this right here, equally freaking ugly. Um, I would have minded it a little less if it was actually uh, laser printed on the blade, but we already have a whole bunch of uh, stuff going on here, including Made in USA uh, on there. Granted, I do appreciate, um, you know, usually being able to identify from a blade the, the country of manufacture of it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a divisive topic for some people. But uh, I do think more often than not, it's uh, it's literally some people probably feeling embarrassed that uh, a knife that they purchased came from a country that uh, they don't necessarily want to admit that it came from. I don't know. That's just kind of my, my thoughts going on on that thing in particular. But uh, yeah, either way. Uh, I don't really think it would hurt if you wanted to take the, take these guys to a uh, belt sander and sand it down just a little bit. They uh, probably won't look nearly as good unless you really want to uh, do a polish job on there. But at some point, I might uh, screw around with that just because a lot of people are um, interested enough in, in uh, doing some modification to a knife there. So, all right. Well, this thing kicks like a damn mule which is great it uh the thwack to it uh isn't super echoey i do like that it's uh kind of sounds insulated so it doesn't you know have like a crazy resonance to it uh some people might like that sound um but uh yeah, I'd rather something be a little bit more uh, subdued than uh, something that'll give you a crazy loud sound or a ting or something like that to it. Uh, also, nice that uh, lefties can go ahead and use this thing. But, yeah, there we go. These two were uh, quite fun. I like both of them. Uh, I do definitely like this launch uh, a bit more than the uh, the Kaiser here. Uh, both of them technically are particle metallurgy steel, but, um, you know, the S35VN is, uh, going to be a bit more capable than, uh, the CPM, uh, 154 is. But they're both fantastic steels. And this one in more than one case, because it was well under a hundred bucks. All right, yeah. So, that is going to do it here. I think I have one other knife that uh, 
might come in uh, in the next uh, couple of days. So I'll, I'll give it a couple of days time to uh, hopefully get here. But uh, if it doesn't, then uh, this will be the end of the video. And uh, if it's not, well then, uh, stay tuned. Alright, well I popped the, uh, the Kaiser Matanzas open. Um, because I wanted to uh, clean it out and everything like that. And found a little bit of a, uh, a funky flaw going on with it. Um, and uh, this is more or less a uh, production uh, kind of thing. It's not a problem with the knife model or anything like that. But I opened it up and uh, saw a whole bunch of uh, scraping kind of going on on the uh, the internal thing here. That's some uh, lubrication that I already put there. But yeah, it was rubbing there and um, kind of holding the blade up. You can kind of see why. Um, this uh, little post here wasn't, uh, it was either driven in too far if they went to that side or not quite enough if they went uh, the other side there. So yeah, they are very much not equal. It's quite proud on this side, which uh, ended up rubbing on that. And I could also see from that, that um, right where it was uh, rubbing, in the uh, the center area there, um, you can see that the, uh, the oil that I even had uh, put on this guy wasn't even really hitting the, uh, the detent. Uh, uh, path going on there. So, yeah, I'm um, currently filing that down a little bit so that uh, it should hopefully be nice and smooth. I mean, at least the um, the, the blade stop pin is uh, nice and tight in there. It's not going to come out. So, hooray for that. But, yeah, I'm just using an, uh, a diamond stone to... Uh, Take that down just a little tiny bit so that, uh, you know, it can hopefully free travel on there and get uh, quite a bit better action. I don't know, just figured I kind of wanted to say that uh, since I came across it. Uh, the other thing that uh, does annoy me, but uh, of course this is quite an old Kaiser model at this point, and they've, um, they've changed their ways with most of them. Um, no um, D-shaped pivot. And they used really, really, really strong uh, thread locker on there. I'm not going to say it was um, a permanent thread locker. You know, it wasn't like red, if you're talking about specifically Loctite brand or uh, something quite like that, but uh, still very, very uh, steadfast. Uh, I really did have to uh, approach the, uh, the sandwich with it, which uh, I'm actually glad that they had the uh, the the Torx bits on uh, both sides, so I could do that, because uh, I'm doing the um, the squeeze for to uh, add a little bit more pressure to the uh, the pivot. I didn't cut it, so alrighty. Well, that was all I wanted to cover here. So, yo, what it is? So this showed up a lot faster than I uh, kind of anticipated it, but I didn't get a whole bunch of tracking information. So, here we are. I guess for my unboxing knife today, this one's relatively new. It's probably in this opening video. It's the TS-369. And uh, I did find, um, after carrying this a little bit, there is one little tiny bit of a problem. Uh, and it really depends on um, your clothing, not necessarily the knife in general. Uh, but some of the, the pockets on my Carhartt pants are not uh, fully horizontal with the opening. They have a, kind of a slant sort of thing, like slacks. Uh, and because of that, these thumb studs stick out a whole bunch past on both sides there. Uh, and I've actually got it um, kind of here where I thought, not looking at it, that that was the, uh, the pocket clip having a difficult time. But I wasn't. The pocket clip itself slides in super, super nice, but... Uh, yeah, if you don't uh, surmount that uh, that thumb stud, you run into some little problems there. Right. What we got in here? Yeah, it's exactly what I thought it was. Okay, neat. This is a new Mossonary design. This is uh, more of a budget model. Uh, they don't have another um, ultra premium one or anything like that yet. Um, just like all the rest of them, it is a, uh, 
six leaf design. They do have some more coming from uh, some other designers. Well, besides that uh, fixed blade that was from somebody else. And yep, yeah, that's pretty much how almost all the rest of them have come is in these uh, little vacuum seal things. Reminds me a lot of um, like a food saver sort of thing. <laughs> It could possibly be even the uh, the same kind of thing that they're using to uh, package those up. Uh, this knife is probably right around um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now. It's real cold. I just picked it up out of the mail here. But here we are. This um, is another rattlesnake design. And yes, micarta. And it's got this little uh, G10 insert. It's, uh, it's a little bit proud but it has a bit of a radius to it so it does feel purposefully like that like you can't tell much of a seam uh just running your finger over it but uh you do feel that it raises and lowers and hey i guess they're uh they're including in some microfiber cloths now so that's cool we got their logo embossed ka -chunk. here we are this one is Pretty darn close to a, uh, a straight back. I'll go ahead and close this knife up and move them out of the way. It's probably just a little distracting for some folks. Yeah, it basically looks straight backed. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, in that particular way, it does kind of remind me of um, uh, the... The, the Tiguis design of Tucson, uh, what is it, the 211? Oh man, all of my stuff is blocked. My uh, my table just off to the side here is an absolute horror show of knife boxes and knives and um, USB cables. And uh, <laughs> I really, really need to tidy that up. It's blocking most of the, uh, the drawers for uh, where I hold my knives at the moment. So I was going to pull it out, but uh, yeah, that's not really going to happen. Uh, the micarta on here, very, very similar to what we have on uh, this other uh, Masonary design. I had it out for uh, some comparison to uh, something else a little while ago. Very different texture. Now, yeah, now that I actually look at it, this is quite a bit different. This micarta reminds me uh, quite a bit more of uh, what you get on uh, Civivi's offerings. Well, it's just to say, it's not bad, but uh, the texture is um, kind of lacking. Um, it feels uh, like I've described uh, Civivi's a little bit more like dried Play-Doh um, in, uh, in the way that that feels in the hand rather than uh, something with a whole lot of texture to it. And you can kind of fix that up. You can rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper to get you a little bit more texture into it um of course the uh the color is going to lighten up just a little bit from uh roughing that up and in this particular case it'll probably uh mess up a little bit of that alignment on the uh little g10 pivot um collar insert thingy thingy <laughs> but uh, yeah not too bad at all um really really subdued at least thin wise uh flipper tab on this guy here uh we have jumping that seems to work quite well for it so that's great uh love the uh the jumping up here it's maybe just slightly less aggressive than i would personally prefer on some of those things well that's okay uh as far as the design goes it's a little range to me i think in general and i think that might be because it's just a little too small for my hands and this isn't exactly a small knife by any stretch of the imagination let's see to prove my point somewhere around here yeah here we go we have a uh, spyderco pm2 very very similar so I'll tell you that uh, this isn't exactly the uh, the smallest knife in, uh, ever here, but um, it does have this uh, beak on the end of it, and for that, if I'm trying to hold it in that uh, saber grip where you know I'll have my thumb on the top of the spine where the jumping is, um, I feel really really cramped in the hand, unfortunately. Um, 
Well, no, that, that's... Sorry. I have my thoughts and I completely just uh, got them all backwards here. This isn't all that bad. Uh, but if I am doing the uh, the whole Gorilla Grip sort of thing, I feel like I'm uh, cramped a little bit in the handle. This beak is uh, pushing me just a little bit harder into the uh, the flipper tab up here than I would want. Uh, luckily, I don't use a hammer grip all that often, so it probably won't affect me all that much. It's a uh, nice and thick handle, you know, flat slab, all that sort of good stuff. Pinch grip feels uh, quite nice on there. They have some, um, well, angle ground or chamfering or whatever you want to call that uh, sort of notched uh, area in the back there, so it's not really getting you on the palm. Uh, reverse grip. We have a nice little curve here. That works uh, pretty darn well. And the flipper tab stays uh, out of my way. You can see I have a, a lot more room that it would uh, travel forward into my hand before that would uh, actually dig in and be uncomfortable at all. Let's see. So we have these uh, little channel fullers here. And yeah, you can do a little bit of a reverse flick. You can do the uh, the thumb roll open too. Uh, for me, it's just maybe a little bit too awkward, uh, but I think that's also just due to the fact that my hands are a little bit larger than probably uh, the designer intended for the knife. We got some nice lock bar um, access, and uh, it is scalloped on the uh, the lock bar side there. As far as the plunge grind goes, uh, looks like it ends way back here. Uh, so we do have a, a decent amount we can sharpen off before anything goes awry. Just like um, most of the rest of um, Mocenary, uh, and Six Leaf for that matter, uh, blades, this is uh, much more of a, uh, a bead blast kind of finish to it. Uh, which can be a double-edged sword. Uh, for one, hey, since I have it here, uh, yeah, this is a six-leaf. Um, also has that same kind of a finish, but this one probably has tape glue and other crap on it because I've been using it recently. Um, a lot of people really don't like that finish, and uh, this type of finish can actually be a little bit more susceptible to rust than uh some other kind of finishes out there just due to the uh the pore size and all that sort of stuff however these are a blank slate uh, and what i mean by that is um if you're trying to take a uh if you're trying to do a stone wash finish on a knife yourself after the fact um and you're starting with a satin blade a lot of times even after a, an extended period of uh tumbling uh, you do get that stone wash finish, but you can still see the uh, the satin lines in there because all of them haven't gone away. Whereas this is kind of a, a really, really nice canvas to be able to do that, and it's nice and uniform to begin with. So all you're going to see is the uh, the stone washing. So in that, in that way, these things in particular don't bother me uh, as much because if I want to change them, I can. But uh, yeah. In general, uh, I am aware that uh, it's not people's uh, most favorite finish, and uh, I'm going to agree with them there. It's not mine either. Still a pretty interesting knife overall. Uh, you can definitely tell this is a sharpening choil because, uh, well, did I get myself? No, I didn't get myself. <laughs> Thought I'd... But, uh, yeah, unless... Um, yeah, unless you have uh, some sort of like little creepy monkey fingers, uh, you're not going to be using that for a finger trial there at all. <laughs> Feels about average in sharpness uh, out of the box, so that's nothing too bad. A little lanyard hole going on here. Their pocket clip uh, is just a little tiny bit different than... Um, than some others. It is a little bit different than uh, this earlier one here. Interesting that they are a little bit different. This one's polished instead of uh, the bead blast as well as having different uh, screw hole thingies. Action seems pretty good. And I uh, will probably be able to tune that up just a little bit better. And kind of looking in from the side, yeah, we do have um, brass caged bearings in here. Not the, uh, the nylon ones that uh, 
uh, Tucson and some other companies uh, still use prominently. But yeah, another uh, another pretty interesting uh, design here. Uh, I will say, uh, when I picked this up, it was a little bit more expensive. Um, so far, the only place I've seen these available is from um, uh, AliExpress from their shop there. But uh, hopefully they end up uh, getting some traction and uh, getting a little bit more distribution because uh, I really like what I've seen uh, so far out of the company so far. So, uh, you know, wish them uh, continued success. Um, don't know if it's just in the uh, in the talks or whatever, but um, on their AliExpress page, they do have um, kind of a, a mock-up for a, a model that uh, I'm assuming is coming next year um, from Jelly Jerry that looks... Uh, quite interesting so uh yeah that'll be neat if indeed that is something that's uh coming forward with it but yeah like i was saying uh aliexpress um yeah this didn't take very long to get here uh i think i paid uh what 42 bucks or something like that just a little bit more maybe than um than a six leaf uh of kind of a similar construction or something like that. However, uh, right around this time, uh, AliExpress apparently has their, uh, their crazy, crazy sale that's going on. Uh, uh, what is it? 11, 11 or something like that. I don't know. I don't shop at AliExpress all that much, but I think that's the, uh, the day where they have uh, site wide agreed upon sales and things like that. But this thing, even before then, it's already uh, cheaper than that. I think 36 or something like that is what they have it uh, discounted to. So, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for this thing in particular, um, not too difficult to uh, pick up there unless it's sold out. But I don't think this one is going to be selling out uh, quite as quickly as, um, as their button lock seems to have. So. All right. Well, with that, I will go ahead and uh, stop talking. I'll leave y'all to it. Ooh, I got me some Kaisers here in the mail today. And uh, for the unboxing, since I didn't unbox it on the channel a little bit earlier, I got this guy. It's a Tucson. It's one of their Damascus ones. I've already had it and done a, uh, a Slippy J Sunday review on it before in the past, but that one had a horn handle. This one has the uh, snake wood. I really like their snake wood stuff. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people still aren't, um, super into their slip darts, so you can still get them for a uh, fairly decent price. But, as I said, as I make a mess of a whole bunch of, uh, packing peanuts, I got me a couple of Kaisers here. Today being the day that uh, a Civivi and we drop happened, and I ordered me some of those. Alright, this is the one that I want to start with here. Uh, yeah, just give me something thin. I want to uh, pop that open. Yeah, it looks like we got hardware in there for it. Oh, it's so cold. It's like 15 degrees outside, and I just pulled these in. <laughs> but, uh, yes, this is the Kaiser Drop Bear. Uh, this one's got 154 CM steel. It's an Aslo design. It's one of their access locks. Of course, it's an Aslo design, so it has uh, the, the proud liners on there, which aren't my super favorite. But at least this thing has a crazy amount of jumping way up there. Really, really spear pointy kind of look to it. And yeah, super, super nice action going on there. And this one doesn't feel super weird to me like a lot of other companies' um, crossbar style locks that end up having uh, bearings in the pivot. A lot of those just end up feeling kind of Strange and rickety, probably because I'm so used to bench mates. But, uh, all right, here's the other one that I've been waiting for for a while here. And this is the Escort. But 
little side um, little side piece to the uh, the original one that uh, came out that also had these aluminum scales. This one has uh, rich light handles on them. It's got the red sort of stuff. Had that on uh, a knife or two before. But this also has 154 cm steel rather than 20 CV. But it's also like 50 bucks less. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. And, well, it is technically a drop point. It's not by much. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very, very similar to a, a straight back. I mean, obviously, it has a little bit of a drop there, but, eh. Still, this one is just a little bit larger than the, uh, the drop bear here, as we can see. Yeah, this one's supposed to be just under three inches. And this is, uh, I don't know, probably closer to 3.3. Uh, I think that's what they had those measurements for. This is, uh, uh, as I covered earlier, Dirk Pinkerton design. He doesn't generally do a lot of um, proud liners, and uh, that definitely keeps up that way. And we got jumping on the back in case you really did want to uh, uh, do a reverse uh, grip that's not a hammer grip. You got some of that there. Uh, I don't really see a whole lot of knives that uh, that end up doing that. Uh, Spyderco Manix 2XL and uh, some other ones like that do. Uh, yeah, these are uh, both super neat. I was kind of excited to kind of get both of these guys on the uh, the drop bar I've just or the drop bear. I've just heard uh, too many good things about, so I figured I would pick it up, even though it is. A little on the smaller side, and yeah, I can see that. You know, it's a three and a half finger knife for me for um, for that uh, standard gorilla grip sort of thing going on. But yeah, not too bad. Both of the access locks on both of these feel super, super good. And of course, um, yeah, I'm not going to do that uh, right at the moment, but uh, for both of these, you can take off the pivot and uh, use one screws to remove the, uh, the outer scales there and uh, actually have um, graduated uh, little holes so you can uh, kind of customize uh, how much Omega Spring strength that they have. Uh, out of the box, it's kind of light, which I like because a lot of times, um, especially on my uh, my 940 here, I do like to uh, just barely pull back with my uh, my index finger with a little bit of the, uh, the wrist flick just right out of the pocket to open it up. And these are actually uh, really good at doing that, whereas um, stronger Omega Springs, like, you know from a, uh, a Benchmade that's not 20-something years old or close to it, uh, <laughs> then uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I have adjusted some Omega Springs on some other knives to um, loosen the amount of tension just to uh, kind of adjust that. But it's a giant pain in the ass to do. So, uh, yeah, glad that uh, Kaiser has more than one knife in their clutch lock. Uh, and both of them seem like they're, uh, working quite well. They do have a, uh, one more variant of, uh, this one that, uh, has a black blade, uh, more black instead of, uh, this grayish kind of, uh, anodizing on the aluminum. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking about it for a little while just because it has a little purple accent on the thumb stud, but you know what, for me, I don't really think it's... It's necessarily worth uh, having a coated blade for. This one, unfortunately, that's the only way it comes. But, uh, yeah, I really wanted the uh, the rich flight handles on this guy instead of uh, the aluminum. Even though uh, I did take a, a step down in steel performance because the original one's in 20 CV. But still, these feel super, super nice. Uh, they don't generally do contouring on uh, rich light. Um, doesn't hold up quite as well, um, or at least it's a, quite a bit more difficult to um, 
machine them to do that in a contoured fashion like you would get out of a uh, standard micarta. Uh, but that's not just a Kaiser thing. That's, you know, companies all over the place. Benchmade, when they were using it, same, same thing. But still, I do like the material. Happy to have both of these. But, uh, yeah, I do have um, two Civivis and a Wii coming. Uh, so you'll probably see that uh, sooner rather than later here. As, uh, you know, they're still a few days out. But, uh, hey, they'll get here. But, neat. All right, I'll catch you then.